Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody, wherever you might be. Today, it's one of the organizers speaking, Tomasz Maszczyk from the University of Warsaw. And we will do cyclic homology today, but not any cyclic homology, a very special breed, hop cyclic homology. So, inertial hop cyclic homology, Tomek, the floor is yours, the zoom is yours. Take it away. Thank you for the introduction. So, let me start. So the title of my talk is Inertial Hopf Cyclic Homology. So Hopf Cyclic Homology is a quite well-established subject. Uh, I want to introduce some novelty related to the case which was not um, studied um, very much. Uh, for instance, uh, except uh, Hopf Galois case when the results of Hara Stefan um, relate cyclic homology with, uh, with uh, some hop cyclic homology. Um, the case uh, of, of, um, of the inertia present when uh, you have some non-trivial stabilizers in topological language uh, is not uh, very well uh, understood. So let me try to explain some fundamentals and uh, apply uh, this theory to, to, uh, to the case of um, non-trivial um, stabilizers, which means uh, we are considering the case of non-free actions. So first, I would like to introduce uh, the categorical notion of the cyclic nerve. Next, I would like to uh, say some words about Kohn's duality uh, and um, Alexander Spanier cyclic object. Uh, then I will introduce some space, which is related to the phenomenon of um, inertia and show the construction of some, something which is um, called uh, inertial cyclic space. Uh, having this, I will formulate some relationship between usual uh, cyclic homology and um, this um, cyclic homology coming from this context of non-free actions uh, in terms of some characteristic map. Uh, then in the fifth point, I would like to show that uh, the construction uh, general, it's, it's a kind of quantization of the inertial cyclic space. So hop cyclic homology is a very well understood uh, subject uh, from homological point, algebra point of view, but its geometric interpretation is uh, far from being well understood. So the point in this fifth point on this list is to explain how this hop cyclic quantization with special coefficients depending on the inertia of the action, in fact, is a kind of quantization of space, cyclic space, which uh, I will introduce, introduce um, in the point number uh, three. Uh, finally, uh, having this construction done, uh, I will show a quantization of this characteristic map and uh, explain it, and um, I'm, I'm going to explain it at, and present some applications. Okay, so the main, main uh, object, fundamental object in this uh, talk is the cyclic nerve. Having any internal category depicted here by this diagram with uh, lots of arrows. Um, when this uh, diagram is meant in the category of topological spaces or some other kinds of spaces. Sorry, Tomek, can you, could you remind me please what you mean by internal category? So we have to fix some category like category of spaces. Uh -huh. In this category, you can consider diagrams. Uh -huh. And there are some diagrams which in the category of sets or large sets uh, define categories. So there's a space of objects uh -huh. denoted by S, X. There's a space of, of um, 
uh, arrows in this category. And there is a fiber product of, um, of C over X with C itself representing um, composable pairs, pairs of arrows. And there are some canonical arrows between these three spaces. So this is an algebraic structure of a category in the category of sets. And in every category, whenever you can speak about fiber products, you can speak about internal categories in this category. Okay? So our ambient category for uh, um, having these diagrams is a category of spaces. They could be topological spaces, they, they could be uh, affine algebraic schemes, they could be whatever, okay? Of geometric meaning. And then having this datum, we can parameterize sequences like here. You see objects x0, x1, and so on. And you have arrows, c0, c1, up to Cn, and uh, they are in a, in a sense, in a, in a cycle, okay? Because the last, the last uh, object X0 is the first one. Sorry, are these categories uh, supposed to be small or not? It's not very important, uh, pro provided you can have these fiber products, okay? okay. So this is rather about objects than homes in this category. Of course, if you want to parameterize something by, by some uh, space, then uh, everything is hidden in the uh, definition of parameterization. So if you have an internal category, then the object parameterized such sequences, by definition, it's an object of this uh, ambient category. It's a space. Uh, in fact, it's a collection of spaces having a structure of a cyclic space. And it is called internal cyclic nerve. Of this, this, this X, should I think the, uh, about this X as a fixed topological space or, or a set, uh, or it is something rather like a collection of all possible objects? Uh, no, it is, it is a space of objects. So it is a space, first of all. But uh, in, in many examples, they will be uh, the main space we are interested in. But, but in general, uh, this X uh, is simply some part of the structure of an internal category. It's a space of objects. OK? OK. okay. And, and the cyclic uh, space structure is defined by means of operators. For instance, the faces which use composition in this uh, internal category, the generalities uh, using substitution of identities, and the cyclic operator, which I cannot see because this bar. Uh, okay, let me do this. Sorry for a while. Um, no, no. Okay. Okay. And the cyclic operator permutes cyclically uh, arrows. Okay. I hope it's clear how this cyclic space is defined. Okay. And again, I'm frozen. Sorry for that. It's a catastrophe. So the only way to escape from the situation is uh, to start the presentation again. What do you think, Piotr, about this? Because I, I'm trying everything, what I can do here. Well, I mean, don't start speaking from the beginning. Just uh, stop your slides and start again. Yes, yes. I have to do this. Go ahead. Thank you. So I stopped at the definition of uh, this cyclic nerve.
and again I can do nothing. There's something wrong with my Zoom, probably. Well, the the cyclic nerve. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, we I can, can hear, hear you. Me. Yes. Well, I, it looks to me like the cyclic nerve is, is the nerve, is what's usually called the nerve, except, well, with a slight modification. No, no, no it's no, a slight, no. a slight change. It's well known I, that the, the nerve of the category has yeah. a cyclic structure, but it is something different. Yeah, yeah yes, okay, okay. Yeah, this is slightly different, yes. Yeah, okay. I understand it. The, the nerve of, what's usually called the nerve of the category, yeah, has, this is a little bit different, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm trying all my buttons to move this to the next page, but... Uh, so, so, sorry, Piotr and Tomek, may, maybe a solution is, uh, Tomek, if you could send the files to someone, say to Piotr, to share. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, he will be uh, showing your screen and he will be just, you know, directing next screen. Excellent solution. Excellent. Share. File. Share. Okay. And now I advance it. Mm. Which page, Tomek? And Page number four. Okay, you've got it. And then I can continue. So okay. the next page. Okay, so among all possible um, interesting uh, cyclic nerves of different categories, uh, there is one basic. Uh, I will call it uh, the Alexander Spanier cyclic space, which can be uh, defined without any reference to any category and any nerve notion. And it is defined for every continuous uh, map between spaces, uh, nth, nth part of this uh, cyclic space is defined to be uh, as a fiber product of n plus one copies of a space X regarded as a space over Y. So it's an n plus uh, first uh, iterated fiber product of x over y. And this is equipped with the standard faces uh, by omitting i's point in this uh, string that the generous is uh, by, uh, by uh, repeating some point and the cyclic operator is again, um, cyclic permutation. Okay, now, now please, next slide. Sorry, so, so this map is present in the definition of the fiber product, am I right? Yes, yes, so, so this string of symbols x0, xn, means that we are considering elements of the Cartesian product of x, but these elements must satisfy uh, some conditions. They no, must be mapped in of y, yes? into a single point in y. Ah, I see, I see, okay. Okay, okay, okay. so it's a iterated fiber product over y. So this is a subspace in, in the Cartesian product. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, so on the next slide, Next slide. I'm going. Yes. Uh, no, 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 no. Sorry. Uh, not twice, please. <laughs> please, only one page. Okay. Uh, there is other very interesting space, which uh, cyclic uh, or cocyclic space, which is the cocyclic um, dual of the first one, or equivalently, uh, this second one is the. Uh, cons cyclic dual of the first one, okay? Uh, it is equipped with uh, cofaces this time, which 
come from from um, degeneracies, uh, co-degeneracies coming from um, phases, and the cyclic operator is um, the inverse of of this of this uh, previous uh, permu uh, cyclic per permutation. Tomek, could you please switch your camera on? Okay, now I can. I switched it off because I, I was afraid that uh, the problem could be related to my camera. No, no, it isn't. Okay. Okay, so next, please. Okay. Uh, why the first object uh, is called Alexander Spenier? Uh, we call the cyclic space uh, y to the power x. Alexander Spenier referring to the well-known fact that for y being a one-point space, uh, the simplicial part of the cyclic structure, uh, when localized along the diagonals of these iterated uh, fiber products, uh, computes uh, gives uh, gives uh, in, in, in on the level of functions uh, gives uh, the standard complex computing the Alexander Spenier cohomology of the space X. Okay. And next piece. Okay. However, this uh, co-cyclic dual also is very interesting because it also leads after passing to algebras of, of smooth functions on a manifold, for instance, it leads to Z2 graded version of the Ramco homology computed in terms of periodic cyclic homology of this algebra, okay? So it is quite interesting relationship. I would like to understand that if I have the complex computing periodic cyclic cohomology, uh, per periodic cyclic homology of the algebra of smooth functions, and then if I apply the con duality, and next, when we uh, restrict to, or not to localize to diagonals, and we are taking only this uh, uh, cosimplicial structure of this, this computes the Alexander Spanier cohomology, which is for good uh, spaces, the same as uh, usual cohomology. So this, the RAM cohomology can be computed from two model, models, which are related by the con duality. Okay. So I have to say that I do not understand the situation entirely. If anybody knows what is going on here uh, in this comparison between Alexander Spanier versus the RAM cohomology of manifolds, so please <laughs> explain to me. Okay, so next slide. Identifies this uh, Alexander Spenier cyclic space as a cyclic nerve. Uh, this is a very easy observation. However, in uh, this beamer, th there is no uh, such an environment like, like uh, observation or or remark, so uh, I called it theorem, but but it's very, something very easy. Uh, so for 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 this object to be a cyclic nerve, we have to find first a, an internal category to create this uh, cyclic nerve. So this um, category is a per, per groupoid. It's a fiber product of x over y. And uh, I hope everybody understands what the groupoid structure of the pair groupoid. We can take the cyclic nerve of it. And then it turns out that we have a map connecting these two constructions, which is in fact an isomorphism of cyclic spaces. Okay. So you see that, that this um, cyclic nerve must play a role in the basic example, uh, producing uh, cohomology of a space. Okay, so please uh, go to the next. Okay, so now we are going to change our 
um, category, our groupoid, instead of uh, speaking about the pair groupoid, which is fairly trivial, we are going to speak about transformation groupoid for, um, for, for the action of a topological group G on a space X. Uh, this is related to some very nice construction. Um, there's an object which uh, measures how, how, uh, somehow uh, how far is this uh, action from a free action. This is called the Berlinski space and it consists of pairs the point X and a group element stabilizing this point when uh, we can regard both the space X and this group as um, G spaces by the original action of uh, G on X, the right adjoint action on G. And in this way, we obtain some um, G space uh, equipped with a diagonal action. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, this space uh, is equipped with some nice um, G equivalent maps or morphisms. Uh, one is uh, a projection onto X, and the second one is a map into uh, the space of um, of, of the underlying space of, of the group G uh, regarded as, as um, acted on by G by uh, right uh, conjug uh, conjugations. Okay. Next piece. Okay, so the name of this space is Berlinski G space. Next. And uh, since it is um, a G space, we can speak about the transformation groupoid of this G space. And this has its own name. It is called the inertia groupoid of the initial transformation groupoid of, of, of G space X. Okay, next please. And this construction of the inertia groupoid through the so-called extended quotient of the first kind construction plays some role in local Langlands, Langlands correspondence according to Aubert, Baum, Plyman and Solfeld. And uh, is a uh, next piece. And is used also in the orbifold and stringico homology <laughs> after Chen Ruan, Lupercio Uribe and Brzezinski Nisto. Next please. To understand what, what is this space, this Berlinski space in the, the most uh, um, um, tangible cases. Uh, let's let's, let's uh, focus on the following uh, situation. Consider a homogeneous space. It's a right space of the form G mod K. Then this, this Berlinski space is a right G orbit of K embedded in uh, the Cartesian product of uh, G and uh, this uh, homogeneous space by inserting this K into uh, the, the first, the first um, uh, slot of this uh, Cartesian product and, and uh, putting um, the right concept of the neutral element, um, uh, which is a distinguished point of this homogeneous space. And this is regarded with uh, the diagonal right G action, which induces the action on the embedded uh, Brzezinski space. Okay, next please. Uh, under this uh, construction, the stabilizer of a point changes instead of the original stabilizer of a point X in the space X, now um, in this inertia groupoid, it is uh, the conjugate centralizer of the stabilizing element K in this full, um, uh, in this full um, isotropy group of, of the point X. Next, please. 
Uh, in general, the canonical G equivalent map from the Berlinsky space to the space itself uh, induces uh, a map from extended quotient defined as the usual quotient of the Berlinsky space onto the quotient, the usual quotient of the space X. Uh, and this map replaces uh, the point of this usual quotient corresponding to the orbit uh, by replacing this orbit by the set of conjugacy classes of its stabilizer. Okay, so that's the meaning of this construction in, in the simple case of homogeneous space. Okay. Uh, if we have this Berlinsky space, we can form the following cyclic space. We can take the Cartesian product of some group, which is mapped into G by some group homomorphism phi with the Berlinsky space. And this is a fiber product over the space, underlying topological space of the group G by a pair of maps. Uh, H to the power n plus one is mapped into G by taking first the product of all these elements, H zero to Hn, and next applying this group homomorphism phi. And the Berlinsky space map is uh, mapped into uh, G by this uh, map uh, going, going uh, induced by, by, by the map which is a projection on, on G or, or this space at G, uh, which is not uh, very well defined. But after inducing the map using these projections, uh, this becomes. Uh, um, well defined. A small calculation is needed to, to check uh, well definedness of this um, fiber product. Uh, Tomek, if it would help you, you can choose in your menu annotate and you can write on the screen because I see that you are pointing your finger at your screen. This is not very helpful so, for us. Yes. <laughs> it's it, it's help, helpful to me, but I understand the problem. You, you can go and see, so, so make annotate, and then then you can choose your pen, and you can write on your slides and erase it. I mean, if you need it, if you don't no. forget. It. Okay. Can you can you see my uh, my pen? No, we have to write with it. Ah, you cannot see it. Okay, so this is not very helpful. No, I mean, you, you have to write so that we see what yes, you write. I, know, I cannot I just see your pen. Good, good. So, okay, so I, I hope this definition yes. of this uh, fiber product is clear. Okay, so next slide. So, uh, wait a moment. Uh, so, uh, the theorem is that uh, this construction can be equipped with the structure of a cyclic space uh, by appropriate operators. Can you show them on the next slide? Mm -hmm. Yes. So the faces are defined as these. Okay. Yes, now we can see your writing. Perfect. Okay. Then we have uh, 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 the general assist. Yes. Mm -hmm. Can you show them? Yes. These are these operators. And we have the cyclic operator, yes, defined by the following formula. Okay, so maybe they are not very um, clear. So these degeneracies, like like this one, okay, uh, these are very obvious, but uh, the kind of cyclic operator here and axioms of uh, the cyclic object produce uh, quite complicated uh, phase of this form, okay? Like this. As usual in a half cyclic yeah. phase. Yeah. 
Can you go to the next slide? Yeah, I, I, I'm just admiring the formulas. I, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's now, now it's wonderful to have a power over your slides. If I want to read something, I can just read. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. But now we have to erase your markings. Just go to this, uh, you can globally erase just by clicking the remove all. I don't know where is the button of uh, re clearing everything. Well, it's in Clear? your bar. Is it clear? No. Clear button? I don't know how to show you things on your computer. No, no, no. Uh, I'm talking about a zoom bar. Is it the button clear? Yeah, there is a button. You go when you have this annotate, you can you, you can ah, choose it. You can you can also uh, choose the option clear all, and then all these green markings will disappear. Let me try. Yes, it is there. Good. Good. So, uh, again, uh, since this construction is uh, could seem to be ad hoc, it would be uh, better to, to understand it in some more fundamental uh, terms. So if we form a transformation groupoid uh, for a G space, um, then we can transport this uh, G action by this uh, group homomorphism phi from H to G, and we can form an induced uh, transformation groupoid for the action of H on X, okay? And the structure of this, of this transformation groupoid is uh, written uh, on, this, on this slide. So there are S and T for uh, that these uh, characters uh, stand for for the source and target. There is a unit map, and there is a composition. Okay. Please go to the next slide. Okay. And then it turns out that this cyclic inertial space, inertial cyclic space is in fact isomorphic as a cyclic space with the cyclic nerve of this action or transformation groupoid. And the formula is quite simple. Okay. Can you move forward? Okay. Uh, from this definition of this inertial, um, from this uh, theorem, uh, claiming the isomorphism of the cyclic spaces, you can see that the right-hand side, which apparently depends on both group H and G, in fact, is independent of G. So we have the following corollary, that this inertial cyclic space, I with these two upper indices H and G is in fact independent of the compatible choice of the group G. What do you mean by compatible? Compatible means uh, compatible with all this data. We have this group homomorphism phi from H to G and you have an action of G on, on this space and the action of H is induced by this uh, homomorphism phi. If you, if you take, for instance, we can speak about and H being a subgroup of G, okay? Mm -hmm. And we can form this uh, inertial cyclic space. And then it turns out that this construction in the, is independent of the choice of the overgroup. But, but, but uh, do, you, do we assume about five that it must be injective? No, in general, not. So I can I, take G I to only... be a trivial group? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. But if, if it's trivial, then the left hand side is also fairly trivial. So the point is that we are, we, are, we can change G. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, then X both, and then both sides depend only on, on H. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when I will start speaking uh, about the uh, non commutative counterpart, this independence of G will become quite non trivial quite non-trivial uh, problem because uh, speaking, for instance, 
about uh, the quantum subgroups, uh, we, we are at the situation where um, there are very few um, uh, Hopf algebra quotients of a given Hopf algebra. Uh, then we are forced by examples to extend this notion of a pair group and its subgroup. We have to extend it to, to the situation when we have a Hopf algebra and we have some quotient, um, quotient um, right um, module coalgebra. Okay. And then the problem um, about uh, independence of, the, of this uh, bigger Hopf algebra uh, is quite non trivial because we cannot reduce all this construction to, to this quotient uh, module coalgebra only because um, uh, Hopf cyclic homology for uh, a coalgebra not being uh, a Hopf algebra is not well defined. So this simple observation from this slide will be quite a non-trivial problem um, in the non-commutative setting. Okay, so please remember this 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 uh, point. Okay, so please go further. Okay, so now, uh, if we have our two cyclic spaces. One is this inertial um, uh, cyclic space related to, to this action, uh, provided that um, we have a good quotient of this H action on X. In, in fact, it is enough to have some H invariant map from X to some space Y, for instance, the quotient map. Uh, this provides us uh, some map of cyclic spaces given by this explicit formula. Okay. And we call this map the characteristic map related to this situation. Okay. Please go to the next. Okay. And then since we understand that uh, this Alexander Spenier uh, cyclic space and this inertial cyclic space are both cyclic nerves, uh, the natural question arises. Is this characteristic map given by this very simple formula um, related somehow to some fundamental constructions of category theory? And uh, the answer in positive to this question is provided by the following theorem, which claims that in fact, this characteristic map is equivalent to a map of cyclic nerves induced by an in, uh, internal uh, functor of internal groupoids corresponding to the graph of the action, okay? So the, the map uh, from H cross X to x cross over y with x is called a graph of a function. The point is that it has some uh, categorical uh, meaning, namely it is an internal functor because we have two groupoids, the transformation groupoid and the pair groupoid. And this graph of the action is nothing but an internal uh, functor. And this internal functor induces a transformation between cyclic nerves of these groupoids. So this explains uh, on the fundamental level, what is this characteristic map? Okay. So please go further. Okay, so uh, this um, commutative square allows us to um, to deduce some properties of this characteristic map, provided we know something about this graph of the action. For instance, if the action of H on X, on X is free and proper, and the map from X to Y is the quotient map of this action, 
then we are in the situation of the uh, when when this characteristic map uh, sorry this um, uh, graph of the action becomes becomes uh, a bijack a continuous a homomorph homeomorphism of spaces okay sometimes it's called a galois condition okay so then this right hand side uh, vertical arrow is induced by an uh, equivalence of categories of groupoids. So it is an isomorphism of psychic spaces. By commutativity and this horizontal isomorphisms, we obtain the corollary that in this case, this characteristic map is an isomorphism. So it's quite interesting because um, this lower object is Alexander Spanier cyclic space uh, measures only, let's say, topology of the quotient map, while this inertial um, cyclic space is related to the inertia of this action, to, uh, is related to non-freeness of this action, okay? So, uh, so comparison of these two uh, to invariance, let's say, of, of the action, topology of the quotient map and, and the inertia of this map is quite interesting. And uh, the, the fact that in this uh, um, uh, free and proper action case, uh, this is an isomorphism uh, means uh, something, which will be uh, clear after passing to this non-commutative setting, okay? And where did you use the properness? Uh, properness is used for the good, uh, good uh, quotient. Okay. Which is mm. okay. Otherwise, of course, we can uh, assume only freeness. But then this, uh, uh, the, the, this, the space, mm -hmm. the quotient space of this action, uh, could be not in the category we are interested in. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. By the way, for topological you, spaces, there are sure. these are pair of sure, sure. Now, this was a very good answer. Yeah. Uh, by the way, maybe it would be quite a proper action if you would switch some light on. Okay. Oh, I was right. It was a proper action. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next slide, please. So now we are going to, to uh, abandon the, the classical uh, uh, topology and, and category theory. And now we are quantize everything, okay? So uh, the, the message from my talk uh, should be that uh, what was so fundamental on the level of topological spaces becomes uh, quite involved uh, on the non-commutative side. And um, the object which is related to, to this, um, to this um, inertia of, of, of the action on the topological side, on the non-commutative side will be Hopf cyclic homology with special coefficients, okay? So first, let me remind you uh, what Hopf cyclic homology is. So this is the theory uh, which was introduced by Kohn and Moscovici in the theory of transversal index uh, theorem for foliations. Uh, then it was generalized uh, by allowing higher dimensional coefficients of this theory by Hayas, Kalkali, Rangipur, and Sommerhäuser. And independently, very similar construction um, uh, has been developed by uh, Hara and Stefan in the context of Hopf-Galois Hopf -Galois extensions. It turned out, uh, it was, uh, it was uh, proved by, uh, if I'm not mistaken, by Kalkali and Rangipur, that these two theories, uh, theories of H, K, R, S, and uh, J, S are related by by um, con duality. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
By the way, your, your S is wrong for Stefan. I don't think it has a check. I think it has a little tail underneath. Probably you're right. Yeah. Probably I produced something uh, wrong. Yes, yes. Okay, so this theory starts from the definition of this um, of this coefficient of this theory, because uh, in opposite to uh, usual cyclic homology of, of algebras, for instance, or uh, co-algebras, uh, this theory needs some coefficients related to the symmetry given by the action or coaction of, of a Hopf algebra H. Um, in the case of Kohn Moscovici, uh, these, um, these coefficients were one dimensional and uh, they were called um, uh, modular pair in involution. Mm -hmm. In the uh, new understanding of uh, these four authors, uh, this structure is a left. It has a lots, lots of ver different versions. So I will focus on one version when I consider a left module over a Hopf algebra being at the same same time a right comodule over it. Okay, so we have an action, left action, and the right coaction of the Hopf algebra H on uh, the module M, okay? And comodule M. And it is called stable anti yetter dreinfeld module if um, the, following, the following two uh, conditions. conditions hold. The first one, the first equality, means that if you take a comultiplication, on this module. Next, we change the order of tensorans in the result of this multiplication, and next multiply this tensorans, we obtain this element M again. Okay, and this is called stability. Okay. The second condition is called the entire Dreamfeld condition, which is a compatibility between the left module structure and right commodule structure. And you see that. Uh, the antipode of the Hopf algebra H is involved. And uh, in this theory, many things depend on invertibility of this uh, antipode. Next, please. Uh, just before I go mm -hmm. further, let me make two quick comments. So first comment is uh, that um, it's quite remarkable that about five years earlier, uh, module pairs in involution were discovered by Kaufman and Radford in the context of uh, knots and quantum groups. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, that's remarkable. They are on the nose, even the convention is the same. Uh, so, so I find it fascinating that uh, uh, some people were doing topology of knots, some other people were doing topology of foliations, and in both cases, uh, the topologies uh, spitted out uh, module pairs in involution. Yeah. Uh, that, that's, that's really quite remarkable, I believe. So that's my first comment. And the second one is that uh, um, you see this anti refers to the fact that if we had a yetter Dreamfeld module here, we'd have S inverse, the inverse of the yeah. antipode. So the difference between yetter Dreamfeld and anti Dreamfeld is just the inverting the antipode wherever it appears in this uh, compatibility condition between action and coaction. And you can also immediately verify it in your mind is that if we would put here as inverse as yet a Dreamfeld would like it to be, then this stability condition wouldn't make sense. Uh, so, so somehow in order to, to, to add stability, which we need for cyclic operator, uh, we really had to invert uh, this uh, antipode here and have anti Dreamfeld compatibility condition instead of yet a Dreamfeld. Okay, now I can advance. Okay, to clarify your comment about uh... Uh, Radford and Kaufman, uh, mm -hmm. their construction had nothing to do with uh, cyclic homology. Nothing. Yes, oh, of course, that's very important. Yeah, 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 surely. This is very important. It had absolutely nothing to do with cyclic uh, homology, um, but it had a lot to do with uh, yeah. uh, famous Radford S4 theorem. You see, this, this compatibility condition uh, it tells you that if you appropriately modify the antipode decorated by a character and a group like, uh, and convoluted all together, then you have something that squares to identity. And, and uh, uh, somehow when you have this uh, famous Radford S4 theorem, uh, uh, then you also have a character and a group like appearing, 
And then the module per involution appears sort of as a square root of these things that appear in, in, in Radford's uh, theorem. So it, 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 very loose analogy, just like Dirac operator is the square root of a Laplacian yes. in some sense. Uh, module per involution is a square root of, of, of a certain pair which appears in Radford's S4 theorem. So this is from this point of view that they had it. Uh, and I cannot explain how it, it, it's related exactly to uh, not theory. This would be a separate topic. Okay. Okay. So uh, having these coefficients, we can form whole cyclic objects, which are defined, denoted by this symbol, and defined as this iterated uh, tensor product of uh, a coalgebra C uh, balanced tensor product over H. When we regard this uh, tensor product uh, of copies of C uh, to be a diagonal right H module and M is left H module. Okay, so this makes sense. And this construction can be given the structure of a cyclic module by the following operators. So, so faces are implemented by, by this um, co-unit of this co-algebra uh, C. Um, uh, the generalities uh, are implemented by, by this uh, uh, multiplication in C and the cyclic operator uh, mixes uh, the module structure on this coalgebra in here with the co-module structure on the level of M, okay? So in this way, uh, we obtain we obtain some cyclic module, which can be used to define uh, periodic, uh, cyclic, uh, cyclic, uh, Hochschild, and negative uh, cyclic uh, homologies of this object. And here you mean capital C, right? Yes, it should be capital. You are right. Please next, clean the board. <laughs> next one. Okay. Okay. So, uh, if you remember this problem about independence of this uh, construction of um, of the choice of the overgroup, let's say G, uh, a very similar very similar uh, situation uh, holds uh, in this non commutative setting, but it needs some clarification what is going on. So uh, first, first step in this direction is the following lemma, uh, which is about the Hopf algebra change for stable entire different modules. So having um, a stable entire different module M tilde over a Hopf algebra X tilde and any Hopf algebra map chi from X, H tilde to, uh, to H, uh, we have an induced structure of a left right SAYD module over H on the tensor product of this M tilde with, uh, with this uh, H over H tilde. So it's a base change of a module. And this module becomes also and stable air anti yeta Dreyfus module. Okay. Can we go further? Yes. So if we combine this uh, base change for uh, coefficients with the construction of this um, um, Hopf cyclic object, then we obtain the following isomorphism. So this means that uh, under such a change from the first lemma, um, this uh, Hopf cyclic object uh, is invariant. Okay. If you have any question, please ask me. If not, then I, I will ask Piotr to go forward. Okay, next one. Okay, so now 
we, can, we have to feed this very general construction with very special coefficients, SAYD coefficients, uh, which are related to the context of, of this um, uh, commodule algebra over H, uh, which is um, um, the following construction. We take the tensor product of H with A and we divide by a subspace, linear subspace, spanned by the following elements. Okay. It turns out that it is a stable anti-rated Rinfeld H module by the following operators. Could you plot show them? Okay. Uh, H module structure on M is given by the easiest formula. We have to multiply in H simply. Uh, the comodule structure is given by the following formula. Please show it. Okay. So this is slightly more complicated, but if you remember the axiom of uh, anti yetter Ritford module, you see that it is also expected. It should be so to uh, guarantee that, that uh, this object is an uh, SAYD module. Okay, uh, the only difficult part of this theorem is checking that, that this choice leads in fact to the well-defined structures of a uh, entire field, stable entire field module. Okay, and this is not so easy, but, but it takes uh, two pages of, of uh, computation. Could you please explain how you came up with this uh, formula for the ideal? So uh, the, the, the history of this of this coefficients is uh, complicated because um, first we real, uh, with Serkan we realized that the construction of Hara and Stefan can be written in a different way, which allows uh, a generalization, which admits a generalization. Um, uh, to, to the to the real realm uh, of quotient um, co uh, module coalgebras of Hopf algebras. Okay, and then it was it was uh, struggle uh, to to generalize these coefficients to the case um, completely completely uh, different than than, than the uh, Galois context okay I cannot explain uh, how at one moment I realized that this is a good choice hmm. <laughs> it was uh, it was a moment of of, of, of reflection and, and divine some... inspiration yeah. So probably it was an inspiration. Okay, so having this uh, having this um, this construction, uh, we try to understand this in the commutative case, and uh, it was a big surprise to us that, provided all these objects are commutative, the Hopf algebra and uh, the commodular algebra are commutative, then this quite complicated quotient uh, becomes a commutative right H commodular algebra, first of all. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you show the next point? In this situation, we can speak about uh, algebraic schemes, mm -hmm. kind of algebraic spaces, okay? So taking the, uh, the group scheme G, which is the spectrum of this commutative Hopf algebra and the corresponding space X um, uh, for um, being a spectrum of, of this commutative algebra A, it turns out that, our, that, that the spectrum of our commutative algebra of SAYD coefficients becomes on the nose the Brilinski G scheme of this action, which is dual to this coaction. okay? But it's not like you quantize Brilinski, you just 
rediscovered Brilinski from no, 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 because be, <laughs> because you cannot simply quantize. You cannot start from quantizing because when you quantize, uh, you have lot lot of choices. Mm -hmm. And and um, uh, when when we start to think about this, our first choice was not right. Mm. It was the order of multiplication in this relation, and we lost our hope to mm -hmm. understand this. Uh, what is going on uh, in terms of of something related to classical topology? But then, after changing the order of multiplication, we realize that this is the right choice. Okay. But but first we had our coefficients, and next we realize that this is a quantization of the Berlinski scheme. So could you show the next point? Yes. So we have the corollary that this inertial SAYD module is a quantization of the Berlinski G scheme. So in at least in algebraic case, of course, you can add topology to, to, to all these algebras and modify everything accordingly. Okay, so having these coefficients, we can form uh, the Hopf cyclic object. So since we started from coefficients we call inertial uh, SAYD module, we call um, uh, th this uh, appropriate um, uh, Hopf cyclic object also inertial. So this is the definition of the inertial half cyclic object. Can you go further? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we are coming back to this problem of independence of something from uh, the choice of this uh, ambient group. So in, in our case, it will be the independence in some sense of the choice of the dominating Hopf algebra H tilde. Okay, we can change this H by some H tilde. And provided this diagram commutes, which means compatibility of two corrections. Okay. Then we can replace um, our uh, inertial SAYD module. Okay, by some base change. It turns out that this base, base change is isomorphic with uh, this um, SAYD, inertial SAYD module M. Okay, so this is lemma about invariance of the inertial uh, SAYD module. Could you go further? Okay, so the next theorem says what is the result of this uh, invariance on the level of uh, the corresponding inertial Hopf cyclic module. Under the assumptions of the above lemma, the collection of very easy maps, obvious maps, related to the base change, to the change of the Hopf algebra in this construction, forms an isomorphism of, isomorphism of cyclic objects. Okay? Mm -hmm. So this is quite interesting point because uh, it reminds us this, uh, this situation from classical topology. On the other hand, now the role of uh, this smaller group H or group which maps into group G mm -hmm. is played by not a Hopf algebra, but co-algebra. So it turns out that these two objects, the Hopf algebra H and the coalgebra C encode completely different symmetries of a non-commutative space. Namely, this C corresponds to an action of some group on the space. And this action is defined in terms of some, which is called something which is called entwining between C and some algebra A, okay? But this entwining is a standard bialgebra entwining provided this C 
is an um, uh, H module coalgebra, and A is a um, H comodule algebra. Then uh, this this symmetry is some some kind of um, entwining between these two objects coalgebra. This is module coalgebra and comodule algebra, and the 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 way of entwining this object. Uh, depends only on this Hopf algebra H. So H has nothing to do, even in the, even in the case uh, when we have uh, Galois uh, coalgebra, quotient coalgebra Galois extension, okay? So Galois type symmetry in this case is encoded by this coalgebra C it's a comodule structure on A, on the algebra A, with respect to this quadra C, so the correction of this quadra C. And, and this H uh, is completely, completely uh, independent from uh, this Galois structure. However, uh, there is uh, some, some um, discovery of, probably of Piotr, maybe. Um, also somebody else knew this, that, that assuming this Galois condition, this entwining is defined uniquely. Okay? Yeah, that's in my paper of Thomas, yes. Yes. Brzezinski, yes. Yes, so Piotr Hayes and, and, and Thomas Brzezinski discovered that, that uh, this, this, uh, there's a canonical entwining in the case of Hobbes Galois uh, extension, uh, coalgebra Galois extension. Uh, so this means that, that uh, this Galois condition uh, relates this Galois type symmetry encoded by C with this en entwining um, of Hobbes type applied to this pair C and A. Okay. However, if we do not assume this Galois condition, mm -hmm. the role of C and H are completely separated. So this is, I think, uh, quite important observation. Okay, can you show further? Yeah, but before I go further, just allow me to go backwards. I just want to understand uh, the relation because you say here that it's under assumptions of the above lemma. Yes, that's the above it's compatibility, lemma. compatibility it, of corrections. Yes, sure. But 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 uh, uh, what I don't understand is uh, uh, what sorry uh, what happens. Uh, what is C? What what actually do we assume about C? How is C related to A? Is I know it's H um, H uh, module algebra. This you, so you C mentioned. is the, yes yes C is the same. We only change the Hopf algebra in this construction. But there is no relationship between C and A, or is it there? No, no, no. no. Uh, uh, a uh, is, a, is, a, is a comodule uh, uh, algebra. A is a comodule algebra for H. Yes. And H tilde. Okay, A is an H comodule algebra. Yeah. And is acted on by a right H module coalgebra in a compatible way. So this generalizes the case when you start from a G space and you have a homomorphism from uh, some uh, group H to some group G, making this, this G space some H space. So, so uh, where is some relation between C and uh, H written? I don't see it. Okay, I, I can uh, write it like this. So I have. Oh. Mm -hmm. This action. Oh. It's not easy. Okay. And We have two corrections, okay. Oh, sorry. This is H. 
So A is a right Sika module. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And uh, we assume that this C is uh, augmented. Okay. So we have E. Uh, and you sorry. have a map from H to C, right? Uh, D, no, 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 no. C is augmented. So this is an analog of, of, of the of the unit of a Hopf algebra, okay? And uh, uh, the, the, uh, since C is a right H module coalgebra, mm -hmm. and we have some distinguished element in C, this gives me a map from H to C, where the element H. Okay, yeah, yeah but, but so I was saying that there is a map from H to C. Okay, I've got it. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. but it's not a part of definition. It's 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 uh appears as as a formula it's a e sorry times h mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah that's fine okay. yeah this is exactly the diagram i was missing thank you very much now i can advance yeah. okay so this compatibility between h and c which is irrelevant from 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 from, uh, from this problem of of changing h Okay, mm -hmm. but it's related to the very construction of this of this object, crop cyclic object. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, so this is the, it's a non commutative generalization of the fact that the inertial cyclic space, as you remember, is independent of the compatible choice of the group G. Okay. Can you go further? Yeah. Okay. Please erase your writing. So we have the following theorem. Uh, it turns out again, as it was uh, in the case of uh, SIYD coefficients, that this Hopf cyclic object, this inertial Hopf cyclic object, uh, under all these assumptions above, also is um, in the commutative case coming from, 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 from classical algebraic geometry, also becomes a cyclic object in commutative algebras. So you can apply the construction of the spectrum and try to see what is this construction. Can you? Next point. Okay, so having a commutative Hopf algebra H, we can take the spectrum, we call it G, the same if we regarded this, um, this uh, C to be a Hopf algebra, uh, the spectrum of it is denoted by H. So these are uh, corresponding affine group schemes. And taking the spectrum of a commutative uh, ring A, we obtain a scheme X. And then, provided a, a good affine quotient exists, okay? defined in terms of invariance of the collection of uh, the Hopf algebra H on, on uh, the algebra A, we can speak about the spectrum of this cyclic object in, in the category of commutative algebras, okay? And very nice thing can be uh, discovered Namely, this is almost like inertial cyclic scheme, which was defined before, which was isomorphic to the uh, to the um, cyclic cyclic uh, nerve of uh, the groupoid uh, transformation groupoid. However, we need to do something with this because if we take um, this uh, spectrum construction, it's a contravariant construction. So from um, um, a cyclic object, we obtain something which is a co uh, cyclic scheme. Okay. But if we apply to this co cyclic scheme cyclic duality of con, mm -hmm. we obtain the 
inertial cyclic scheme as it was before. Okay. Nice. So this is not not this construction on the nose, but this up to cons cyclic duality. So you see uh, two non-trivial places where con cyclic duality plays a role. Mm -hmm. The first was this comparison of two uh, realization of cohomology of a manifold, one the Ram and one uh, Alexander Spanier, related by this con duality, and second this quantization up to con cyclic duality of, of this um, inertial cyclic scheme by means of this inertial hop cyclic module. Can you show? Yeah, I just have a stupid question. If C is a co-algebra, what do you mean by the spectrum of a no, co-algebra? No, 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 the, the first point, this co-algebra is in fact a, a hop algebra. Okay. Okay. So the corollary up to con, uh, con uh, cyclic duality, the uh, inertial Hopf cyclic object is a quantization of the inertial cyclic scheme. Okay. Uh, and then, if you remember, we had our objects, uh, fundamental objects like like uh, Alexander Spanier or related to, to, to the topology of, of, the, of the map. And we had also this uh, inertial uh, cyclic space uh, related to uh, geometry of, of, of uh, non-freeness of the action, okay? And we had our uh, characteristic map. Uh, here we have something similar, namely the role of uh, this um, uh, the role of this um, um, uh, Alexander Spanier uh, cyclic space uh, is played dually by by this Cadison's um, Cadison's um, um, relative uh, cyclic uh, homology. Uh, complex, uh, or sorry, uh, cyclic object, cyclic module. Okay, so this is the left hand side of this of this uh, morphism. On the right hand side, we have we have our inertial um, hop cyclic object, and there is a map. So this is uh, uh, very similar to the map which was used by uh, Hara and Stefan, and next it was used by us. Um, in, in this generalization of, of, of Hara Stefan's uh, result to the, to the realm of, of um, quotient co-algebra uh, module, module co-algebra uh, Galois extensions. However, uh, these previous formulas um, cannot be uh, mimic in, in, in this situation. You have, to, you have to do something with these formulas. Uh, to uh, make sense, uh, to, 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 to give sense to, to such, such a formula. So uh, we have our non commutative or quantized characteristic map in our situation, uh, inducing uh, all usual maps on cyclic, periodic cyclic, negative cyclic, and Hochschild homology. And similarly, as uh, it was in the case of free and proper actions. Here in the pure algebraic context, um, if we assume that the Hopf algebra has invertible antipode and the entwining satisfies the Galois condition. What does it mean that entwining satisfies the Galois condition? So when C is um, uh, an augmented co-algebra or mm -hmm. co-augmented co-algebra, mm -hmm. then uh, it defines an action, a co sorry, a co-action of, of, of C. Mm -hmm. Then you can ask if this co-action satisfies your Galois, C Galois condition. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, okay. So, this C, so in fact, C, this C Galois condition is a property of this C co-action. Like, like before you assume that the action of yeah. H is uh, free and proper. No, no, no. So, so this is pure, alg pure algebra now. 
Now yeah, we are no, speaking about. Now we are speaking about about uh, algebras, comodular algebras instead of spaces acted on by some group. Yeah, but now you mean that you take this canonical entwining coming from the Galois condition. Yes, but okay. but the, my logic is uh, slightly different. Uh, in general, we can speak about uh, uh, C extensions uh, satisfying uh, where, where the correction is uh, defined in terms of the uh, entwining and uh, uh, group like element of this coalgebra. So, this is uh, this, the context which is much wider than the um, coalgebra Galois. Okay? In the coalgebra Galois, everything collapses to uh, to your definition. Okay, mm -hmm. it is very good. Uh, but uh, in my, uh, according to my definition, the situation um, uh, is analogical in the in the in the um, um, case in, in the cases when when uh, this Galois condition is not fulfilled. Okay. So I'm talking about C extensions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay which by accident could be Galois, but mm -hmm. it, it's not necessary. Mm -hmm. And everything makes sense. Uh, Tomek, may I ask a yes. question? Or the, I, I am a bit confused. So uh, you are saying, so that there are two situations. In the C Galois condition, you generate an entwining. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then you have the, uh, but uh, you don't necessarily get uh, uh, group like elements in your algebra. So the, the, the yes, action yes. that you recover, action that you recover yeah, yeah no, the entwining is not related. And in your other situation, you start with a algebra of a group like element and the entwining, yes. and then it generate the coaction. Yes. Okay, so uh, so that, that that was the point of view in my paper with Shan, the first paper on entwinings. Yeah, so the but point they, is they are not, you are saying that one is more general than the other. They are not. Uh... Yeah, so I can explain the difference. Mm -hmm. uh, the difference is that um, if you don't have this um, uh, group like element, uh, you can define uh, invariance of this correction uh, as endomorphisms of a C commodule being A. Yeah, so because you have a coring associated to an yeah. entwining. And this, and this definition and this definition is uh, functorial with respect to these uh, corrections of, of coalgebras with a uh, group-like element. Okay, because this endomorphism ring is the same as uh, another construction of invariance of the correction, which are defined by means of this correction uh, implemented by this um, by this um, group like element. So this definition of co of aria, uh, invariance of the correction um, with use of of uh, um, this group like element is better because it's functorial. So I uh, I. Uh, stick to this definition. Of course, knowing that uh, um, outside the presence of, of this uh, group like element, still uh, this Galois context uh, makes sense with another definition of uh, invariance of the correction. Okay. So, okay, so, so what, what I just wanted to clarify is that uh, it's not that the one set situation is more general than the other. But the, there is some intersection between them, and they go in slightly different directions. Because uh, yeah, yeah. If the, you and they, they yes, definitions of invariance. Of, of the yeah, but yeah. technically you are you are you are right. But Piotr <laughs> told me that that um, uh, that situation when you do not have uh, this uh, group-like element uh, are pathological. They should be regarded as pathological. It's not only my opinion. Of course, you can do something with also in this situation, but uh, general properties of these constructions are much worse. 
So therefore, if we assume uh, this group-like element, then you have uh, this um, augmented C extension or co-augmented uh, co-algebra extension uh, context wider than the Galois context. Okay. Uh, but if you add this uh, this uh, Galois condition, you obtain uh, since this entwining is only one in this situation, you obtain your definition, uh, and uh, the definition of invariance of the collection are independent of Galois condition of the Galois condition. So I can speak about this uh, uh, this um, invariance of the collection. For, for this uh, co-augmented C uh, co-module uh, situation uh, outside the Galois context. So in this sense, uh, this um, notion of the entwining satisfying the Galois condition, provided our co-algebra is equipped with this distinguished group-like, is wider than this Galois context um, uh, pro pro uh, provided uh, you assume uh, this, this this group like element okay is it clear what, what yeah. the difference yeah i i can see what the difference is yes. so so the so the story when when invariance of the collection are defined without the use of this um, uh, group like element it's a completely different story i do not claim that that, that, that my generality also um, contains this generality uh, you, are, you, are, you are talking about. Okay? But, but am I to understand that you can have this uh, a Galois condition for an entwining without actually having a Galois extension? Uh, if you have this group-like element, yes, it is true. Because okay. using this group-like element, you can define uh, invariance of the correction. Mm -hmm. You can define a Galois map. Mm -hmm. You know that this uh, collection is uh, induced by this group like element by uh, yeah. this entwining. Yes. So everything depends on, the, on this entwining and, mm -hmm. uh, and this group like element. Yeah. 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 So sort of you. you and Galois you, you, yeah. story is separate story. Yeah. And of course, there is a ramification of this construction in the direction uh, Tomek was talking about without this group-like element. Okay, it's a pity you didn't write it explicitly, just dressed it into words, but okay. Should yeah. I go forward? Yes, yes, please. If there are no questions. But please erase the junk, I mean, it's... Okay. So in the Hope Galois case, which Mora is speaking is the non-commutative version of free actions, uh, our construction coincides with the construction of Hara and Stefan. Sorry for the Stefan again. Hmm. The accent is wrong here. At least your suit is correct. Yes. So what is uh, what is the point of this theorem? So for, uh, the, the point is that from the very beginning, coefficients of our um, inertial a half cyclic object do not refer even in this in this um, half Galois uh, case. Um, they are not on the nose uh, uh, defined by uh, taking the quotient of the algebra A by the commutator commutator with with um, uh, invariance of the correction, as it is in the case of Hara Stefan. Okay, and uh, first of all, identification of our co coefficients and coefficients of Hara and Stefan is quite not trivial. And the same uh, is true for for this um, hop cyclic object. It is not obvious uh, from the scratch that we are talking about the same object, but accidentally, it coincides with this one. So, uh, so in a sense, our construction generalizes this context 
first to the context when uh, instead of uh, Hopf algebra, you, you can have this co-algebra, h modern co-algebra. And second, you can forget about this Galois condition, which means that we allow some non-trivial inertia, some non-trivial stabilizers, let's say, speaking in the language of classical spaces. Mm -hmm. Okay, can we go further? Okay, uh, so this construction uh, of this characteristic map between, between these uh, cyclic modules, of course, produces some maps between different versions of cyclic uh, homologies. Uh, the case of, um, of the periodic cyclic homo homology is uh, very interesting because it corresponds in the topological case uh, to, uh, to the Ramco homology of a space. And uh, then we can speak about situations when we have a morphism of maps, for instance, the quotient map of some X algebraic action of some algebraic group on, an, on a variety, let's say. And then provided uh, the, mm, the inertia of this action uh, is present, then we have a map comparing this topology of this action with encoded by, by, by the RAM cohomology on the left-hand side, written as, as a periodic cyclic uh, homology, relative periodic cyclic homology. Uh, with uh, some invariants uh, of uh, this inertia. So, so the right-hand side is like representation theoretic and the left-hand side is like topological. And the comparison between these two can be used to detect some uh, very subtle um, geometric consequences of non-freeness of this action. For instance, for, for uh, schemes over complex numbers, we can speak about the action of an affine group scheme G on an affine scheme, scheme X, uh, admitting a quotient map from X to Y defined as uh, the quotient X mod G, okay? So the left-hand side speaks about the topology of this map. So it's a relative topology. You can think about this if, okay, if this map F is a submersion or smooth map, then this relative periodic cohomology is a bundle of cohomology, the RAM cohomology of fibers of this map. Mm -hmm. so, so this can change if we um, go from one to another point of the, of, of the base, Y, okay? On the other hand, on the right hand side, uh, if the, this action of G on X is not free, we can form this object of, of uh, representation theoretical flavor and our characteristic map can relate these two things, okay? So it is written in the last line that in this way, we can compare the topology of the quotient map and the inertia of the group action. Okay. It can happen that this map F, even if it is very good for most points of Y, over some points have some singularities. And this, for instance, it could be, this action could be the action of a finite group like Z2, which is a um, set theoretical incarnation of the group of roots of unity, algebraic group G, denoted by mu2, on the algebra of regular functions on, on some, some space, which is the total space of some ramified covering. So if we go from X to minus X in this presentation of this algebra, so this is a Z2 action. This corresponds to the Z2 action on, on spectra 
of these cognitive algebras. Tomek, I really would appreciate if you would just erase these markings because it's kind of. Oh, sorry. So, so I see now old and one and new ones. Yeah, exactly. And okay. second one, we are well over time, so you know people okay, are basically so, leaving and melting away. Yes, so maybe I must have to pay example and wind it up. Okay, so uh, so in this example, we can relate uh, this ramification of this double cover with inertia of this action. Okay, and then can you can you show? Next. Okay. In this case, our periodic cyclic characteristic map becomes an injective B-module map from a locally free module to a free module, both of rank two, whose co-kernel is supported on the branch locus. So this means that what is interesting in our characteristic map is the co-kernel of this injective map, which is which can be used to detect precisely the ramification of this map. Uh, another application of our construction is a new invariant of finite dimensional algebra. Uh, for every finite dimensional algebra A, we consider the universal Hopf algebra coaction. Um, the existence of such universal Hopf algebra coaction comes from this construction of Manning's Hopf envelope applied to something which is called the Tambara, Tambara's Coendomorphism by algebra of this finite dimensional algebra. Okay. And then having this universal coaction, Hopf coaction, we can form our universal inertial cyclic module. Okay. And uh, this is an invariant of a finite dimensional uh, uh, algebra in the sense that uh, if uh, any uh, theory like cyclic, negative cyclic, or periodic cyclic homology or cyclic dual cohomology. Um, of two such algebras are different, these algebras cannot be isomorphic. Okay, and can you show? Next, uh, why we are interested in this, um, in this um, kind of invariant of uh, related to periodic cyclic um, homology, homology, sorry, because for finite dimensional algebras, uh, you, the usual periodic cyclic homology is a very poor invariant. Mm. Okay, can you show? Because by the Godwilly theorem, uh, periodic cyclic homology is um, invariant mm -hmm. uh, uh, under uh, near potent extensions, and many algebras, finite dimensional algebras, are constructed in this way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? To distinguish them, we have to use somehow the fact that this universal Hopf algebra correction is not free. So the ob this inertial, uh -huh. um, yes. uh, inertial uh, Hopf uh, cyclic object mm -hmm. or uh, periodic uh, uh, homology of this object can remember things which usual periodic um, homology um, neglects. Okay. You, you, you look into these symmetries of yes, mm -hmm. yes, and usual, you, usually, uh, usually these symmetries of finite dimensional algebras are very non trivial and very much non, uh, non free. This uh, mm -hmm. finite uh, uh, dimensional uh, algebras over complex numbers uh, th they are very rarely um, have Galois extensions. Okay, so Tomek, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we are well over time, partially due to technical uh, difficulties. Uh, but uh, uh, if you have any questions, uh, brief, I hope, uh, then fire it will. Well, almost nobody left, but if you still have any questions, <laughs> go ahead. I have a question about this universal Hopf algebra coaction. If yes. we start with a commutative, what can be said about this universal? Is it always it's... non commutative and non commutative? Or... Okay, it was a subject of uh, my talk maybe uh, one year ago when uh, I was talking about um, algebra of double numbers. 
near potent extension by uh, near potent of degree two, okay, of, of let's say complex numbers. So it's, the, the, the answer is very interesting because this universal Hopf algebra is nothing but this, uh, oh, I lost the word. Um, the most famous example of non-commutative, non-commutative, non co-commutative non co Hopf algebra. Okay. But finite dimensional, you, you mean this? No, 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 no. Algebra, is algebra of dual numbers is, is, a, is an algebra of dimension two. No, I, I meant uh, H. But this Hopf algebra is infinite dimensional. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It is infinite dimensional, but it's very interesting. Yeah, it's uh, kind of like, like quantum permutations have become very quickly infinite dimensional for finite sets. Yes, but, but this is even more special than, than permutations uh, because this is the, the Hopf algebra whose algebra is whose, sorry, monoidal category of comodules is strongly monoidal equivalence, strong monoidal equivalence with the category of complexes. Complexes in the sense of vector spaces in the sense of homological algebra. So, so this is something very fundamental in mathematics. So, so this symmetry of double point, because this uh, algebra of dual numbers is an algebra of polynomial functions of a, on a double point, okay? From this quantum point of view, it's a symmetry of homological algebra over, over a field of complex numbers, let's say. In fact, it's the, everything here is defined over over z, so it is so it is uh, in fact very universal. It is it is homological algebra in, in a very, very universal sense. Okay, and this has lots of very interesting consequences. Uh, this is related to 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 so called. Uh, uh, Oh, I forgot. It's about the topological, uh, fine, uh, the topological algebras, which are duals of coalgebras. Okay, there is some some topology on duals of vector spaces. So these are topological vector spaces. In this vector space, you can speak about uh, algebras. Algebras, uh, in this sense, uh, admit some homotopical uh, theory, and the homotopical theory related to this. Uh, to these um, uh, double numbers is the same as the uh, resolution of a zero algebra. It's a co-simplicial resolution, uh, sorry. It's a simplicial algebra uh, resolution of um, uh, zero algebra. So it is, it is a resolu simplicial resolution of, uh, sorry, co-simplicial resolution of, of uh, the empty set. If you think about these two uh, or, or of a double point as two colliding points, so it uh, seems that it could be a model of two, um, two particles, elementary virtual particles of opposite, of opposite uh, charge, uh, which um, like, like particle and some antiparticle, which uh, are colliding and they disappear, okay? So this phenomenon can be uh, in homotopical algebra of this, uh, of this uh, uh, let's say, chain differential uh, graded um, algebras described um, uh, purely algebraically. So- Okay, Adam, are you happy? Hey. Uh, yes, yes, very interesting. Thank you, thank you for the answer. So, okay, so in, I... in very simple, uh, so let me uh, subsume that in, in this very trivial algebraic ca case, uh, you can obtain very non-trivial um, universal um, uh, quantum symmetry. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you again, Tomek. Uh, I think it's a good time to stop. I just uh, 
want to make sure that uh, yes, <laughs> I want to make sure that um, uh, yeah, this is actually is written. We have main theorem. Yeah, yeah, this is what I thought. This is very very beautiful because this Hara and Stefan isomorphism is uh, fundamental, and it was one ways in which uh, stable aesthetic modes were discovered. And uh, it was really, really hard. It was an open problem for a long time to somehow generalize it. And I think that visualization obtained herein is a, a very beautiful one. So, okay, I stop sharing and I even stop recording. <laughs>